do a nice talk about phase two. So obviously um, we wrapped up phase one today. Congratulations. There might be a few of you who are still wrapping up your workout later on tonight, but obviously once we get through today, phase one is officially in the books. So congratulations to each and every one of you for all of your hard work up until this point and all the progress you've made. I did a big post about you know, people seeing big results and people seeing little results and that results are results and progress is progress no matter how big or small. So um, even if you feel like it's just been small progress, you guys, first, I, I just want to point this out. You've got to celebrate that. You've got to be proud of it. Even if your progress is just that you haven't worked out for 26 days straight and this is the first time you've ever do it, done it, or your progress is that you got stronger or your progress is that you stuck to the nutrition plan for the first time whatever those things might be like let's make sure we acknowledge those things as well because that's really really important i'm trying to get the lighting right here because it's like blinding me and this overhead yellow is killing me so hold on okay but we need to talk about phase two that's the next important thing to talk about is phase two we've got to redo our calculation so I want to make sure everybody understands that understands what we're doing when we recalculate why we're recalculating and how to go about deciding if you're in the right if you should be in um, weight loss or if you should be in maintenance so um, pull up a chair get comfortable pull out your pen pull out your paper and let's let's chat so First things first, since it is the end of phase one, you guys need to make sure that tomorrow, and I say tomorrow because we've worked out today, it's always best to do uh, measurements and photos on a rest day. Because whenever we work out, we get a little inflammation in our body. So you could be a little swollen from blood volume. So the last thing you want to do is like work out today and then do your measurements because you will end up disappointed. And if you've done that, if you've done measurements like right after a heavy lift, um, that could also be why you might not see as big of changes. So just be aware of that. So photos and measurements tomorrow and definitely post those. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to do our phase two calculation. So obviously we're at the end of a phase, so no matter what, we need to recalculate, right? Because hopefully you've lost weight, you've gained muscle, all of that. So we need to do a recalculation no matter what. But you're going to see that the formula for phase two is a little bit different than the formula for phase one. I've got my little sheet pulled out. So formula for phase two, you're going to do your current weight. So obviously I know we've talked a lot about not getting on the scale, but now's the time to get on the scale. Again, do it tomorrow. I would say first thing tomorrow morning when you wake up is when you like, if you go to the bathroom first thing in the morning, handle your business, then do your photos, do your measurements, do your way in, and then go eat breakfast. It's going to make you feel the best. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to give you a little extra something there. Okay, so you're going to do your current weight times 11. That gives you your baseline of calories, okay? Basically, like, what you need to survive for a day just to normally function, okay? Then you're going to take your baseline um, calories that you figured out. You're going to add 600 to that. That 600 represents the calorie burn from the workouts. And I know a lot of you have messaged me and said, I'm not burning 600 calories. My watch isn't saying I'm burning 600 calories. You can't really go by what those watches say, you guys. We tested several of them on set, and the range was literally a 300 calorie burn range, depending on the watch that we were using. Um, there's really only one right now that I like. It's the... Uh, it's a newer version of the Polar, and it actually does a fitness test on you at rest first because it determines your resting metabolic rate, and then it calculates your calorie burn. And when we used those, those gave the most accurate reading. But the other reason you can't just go by those watches is because we are doing a lot of weight training, and with weight training, there's a post-burn, meaning the, the extra calories burned after the training because you lifted weights because your body needs to repair the muscles from lifting weights, okay? There's no way to calculate that on your own. You have to go to, to a doctor, have special tests done to, to be able to calculate that. So all of those things are being taken into consideration with that 600 calorie add-on. So we've said you do your current weight times 11. That number plus 600, okay? If you're eating in maintenance, that's where you stop. 
Th those are your, that's basically your maintenance calories right there, okay? If you're breastfeeding, that's where you stop because those are your maintenance calories. Now, if you're gonna eat in weight loss, then you're gonna subtract 550 calories. Okay, now in phase one, we subtracted 750. And a lot of people want to know, well, why did we subtract more calories in phase one than in phase two? Because in phase one, we were going for a little bit more weight loss, and we're still going for weight loss. But in the first phase, as your body gets used to this, you haven't built all the lean muscle yet that requires a whole lot of fuel, right? You're building it. And we do want to burn fat, so we go for a, a bigger deficit in phase one. But what we what we learned through all of the year of testing and everything, and then the test group going through it, is that by phase two, you've put on a, le a lot of lean muscle. And in order to fuel that lean muscle and be able to continue to burn fat, you actually need more fuel. And if you don't have enough fuel, then you'll, you'll actually probably hold on to weight. So we have a little less of a deficit. You're still at a deficit, but it's a little bit less than what it was in phase one. Okay. And that's important for you to know because that's going to help you determine if you want to go in weight loss or if you want to go in maintenance. We're at a smaller deficit already this time. Okay. So that that that's the formula it's in your packet you guys know it like look at it calculate it but now let's talk about how you decide if you should be in weight loss or in maintenance so first of all if you have weight to lose we'll, we'll just go with the with the most basic if you have weight to lose then you would typically eat in weight loss but we can't quite go there right because We've already seen that if you if you have a little weight to lose, you actually might need to eat in maintenance to get those last five or 10 pounds off. So we talked about this a lot in phase one. If you've been feeling excessively tired, if you've been feeling excessively hungry, if you've been feeling excessively moody, you might need to bump up to your maintenance. But again, you're, you're getting an extra 200 calories already in this phase. Because like I said, I made the deficit smaller, okay? So you might want to recalculate at your weight loss, eat there for a week or two, see how you feel, and then determine if you're on the fence, if you've been on the fence, okay? If you're like, I'm kind of hungry, I'm kind of tired all the time, I'm kind of moody, but I don't know, then just use this formula and do weight loss because again you're getting an extra 200 calories already even with the weight loss formula okay so use that um now let's say you're sort of on the fence maybe you're not losing as fast as you think you should be losing um and again we have to be realistic about this what you should you know if you're like if you have 10 pounds to lose and you're like i didn't lose it all in phase one that's not a realistic thought okay but if you've got 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose, and maybe it's not coming off as quickly, and you've been in the weight loss, you might need to come up one bracket. We talked about this in phase one also, that your weight loss bracket compared to your maintenance bracket is usually two, your, your maintenance bracket's usually two brackets higher, okay? You can baby step up. So let's say you were eating in plan A for weight loss, and your maintenance is plan C. You can, you can baby step up to plan B, see how you feel, see how your results go, and then bump up to maintenance if you still need to. So I'm giving you guys a lot of information and there's a lot of, um, I know there's sort of a lot of if-thens with this stuff. And, and it is, it is that. I can't, you know, there's millions of you out there and there's 43,000 of you in this group and everybody has different circumstances and different places that their body is in. So I'm, I'm trying to give you big, broad, general guidelines and then let you make the most educated decision based on everything I've said from phase one and now what we're going into in phase two. I can tell you the workouts are only gonna get harder. You're gonna definitely burn more calories. You're gonna definitely build more lean muscle. Uh, but things I still want to remind you guys about. Don't forget that we talked quite a bit about stress and how stress can make your body hold on to weight, even when you're doing everything right. Even when you're eating the right amount of food, you're getting the right amount of sleep, um, you're doing the exercises, all of those things. If your body is in a state of stress, whether you're 
you know, you've got personal issues going on, family issues, financial issues, whatever it might be. If you're under stress, and we all know what that feels like, your, your body's going to be releasing cortisol no matter what. So if you're under stress, I just want you to take that into account that that could be part of the reason that maybe your results aren't coming as fast as you want them to. It's never as cut and dry as just I'm eating right, I'm exercising right, things aren't working. If you're eating right and exercising right and things aren't working, then there's other factors to look at. Sleep is a huge deal. I talked about this a lot before we started phase one, but, and I used, um, uh, one of the coaches from the original test group as an example, Brad, we were like, I don't know, maybe six or seven weeks into the program. He was crushing it, shredded, felt amazing, all the energy in the world. And then one day he posted, he's like, I don't know what the deal is. You guys, I'm up five pounds. I haven't changed anything. Like, I don't know what's going on. And so I messaged him privately and started asking him all the questions like, are you doing this? Are you doing that? How's your sleep? And he said, my sleep is really good, but I'm getting about, I've been getting about an hour less a night this week. And I said, an hour less like last night or an hour less every single night this week. And he said about an hour less every single night this week. Well, one hour less a night times seven is seven hours less of sleep in one week. That's a whole night's worth of sleep. It completely affected his body. And we don't always think about that. We think, oh, it's just one hour, but it accumulates. So if your sleep has been off, if you haven't been getting enough, again, you guys, this program is, you're, you're training like an athlete. So you got to take care of your body like an athlete. And I can promise you athletes make sure they get enough rest because they know that's when all the magic happens and that's when their body recovers. So it's not just about, do I feel tired in my mind? It's about giving your body enough time to repair from what you've put it through from the workout and from the day and that sort of thing. So again, things to take into consideration because so many people are so quick to be like, it's not working and they're forgetting their self-care, they're forgetting their sleep, or um, they're forgetting the fact that like, you know, maybe they just lost a loved one and they're, all of these things come into play before you just go, okay, I need to be in this bracket because this isn't happening or this is happening. So I want you guys to think about all of that stuff as we go into this. I want to start looking at some of your comments because I want to be able to answer your questions while we're on here because that's going to guide our conversation. Somebody's trying to FaceTime me, which is awesome right now. Okay. If they call again, that would be four times in a row, and I might have to answer it to make sure everything's okay, because I don't know who it is that would call me that many times. So bear with me. Okay, let's see. What are you guys asking about? You guys are so excited for phase two, which is all good. I don't know why people keep calling me. Don't they know I'm in the middle of FaceTiming or Facebooking, you guys? Okay. I'm just looking for questions. I know we have lots of them. Okay. What time of day should we weigh ourselves? So like I said, I always prefer to do it. If I'm going to weigh myself, I prefer to do it on a rest day, first thing in the morning before I've eaten breakfast and after I've gone to the bathroom. That's just me because I know that's when I'm going to be the absolute lightest. So that's my own personal preference. But whatever you do, you should Whenever you choose to weigh yourself, you guys, make sure it, you're consistent, okay? So, like, if you're going to weigh yourself first thing in the morning on a rest day, that should always be when you weigh yourself. And if you're going to weigh yourself last thing at night, then that should always be when you weigh yourself so that it's consistent from um, time to time. Okay, let's see. You guys are all excited for phase two, so that's super awesome. Somebody said, I lost two pounds as I slept last night. Yep, that'll happen, you guys. That will happen where you might go two weeks with nothing really moving, and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, hey, I'm three pounds lighter today. What? It, it will happen like that throughout this 80 day. It's just the ebb and the flow of fitness and weight loss and, and nutrition and all of that. So just be aware that you might go a week or two without seeing anything, and then all of a sudden see a huge number drop. I talked about that before we ever got started, that that could happen. Okay, let's see. Somebody said, I wound up gaining weight. I assume it's muscle. Mia, that, did you lose inches? Are your clothes fitting better? And were you eating in weight loss? Were you eating in maintenance? You guys, here's the one thing I will say, and, and this isn't meant to be mean at all, not even really tough love. It's just sort of meant to shine a light on it. The only way that you gain weight 
when you're exercising like this is if you're not really following the nutrition properly, okay? Now, lean muscle, yes, there's a difference. When I say gain weight, I'm talking about fat. The only way you really gain fat is if you're overeating, okay? So if, you're, if you don't end up in a deficit or if you're eating really bad food, because there's a difference, okay? I told you guys when we first started this, I started the program at 107 pounds, ended the program at 111 pounds, and I went from 20... Um, 21% body fat to like 18.3 or something like that. So while the number on the scale said I gained weight, I gained muscle and I lost fat, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. So um, yeah, Mia, that number on the scale doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong. It probably is muscle. And if it is lean muscle, then you uh, your inches should be coming down. So be aware of that. Every once in a while, yes, you can end up in the same bracket. Caitlin said she ended up in the same bracket. And uh, if that's the case and you feel moody or um, tired or uh, can't sleep at night because you're so hungry, then you could move up one bracket. But if you're in the same bracket, it happens because you might have been at the bottom like of A and then recalculated and now you're at the very top of A. So every once in a while that can happen. Okay, so uh, Rosie says she's nervous for refeed day. You don't want to binge. Um, you guys, I'll talk about refeed day in a little bit more, but here's the thing. It, you can't binge because I still tell you how many containers you get in a day. And it's still, your macros are still balanced out for that day. So while you get to have some dirty yellows and an extra purple, you'll see your fat is cut back a little bit. Um, so uh, don't worry about that. It's not a binge because it's not a free for all. You, you don't get to just go, I'm going to eat until I can't eat no more. Th there, there is definitely a very strong method. You're still going to be eating on time nutrition. So I'm still telling you exactly what containers you're eating at exactly what time you're eating. So just like you've been doing, you're going to continue to follow that. Um, and when it comes to the supplemental yellow list, I did realize today, you guys, I don't know why they accidentally left all the fixate recipes off that supplemental yellow list. So that will be updated this week. Um, and I apologize that I didn't catch that. We had a whole list and then I'm not sure if, if an old version of the list got posted or what, but um, there are tons of fixate dessert recipes that are a part of the supplemental list, including the brownies, the chocolate chip cookies, um, the whoopie pies, like there's plenty. So they just, for some reason, left that they accidentally forgot to put them on the list. I don't know what happened, but I'm getting it fixed. I already sent an email. People are already on it, so don't worry about that. Uh, somebody said, I want to take end of phase one photos, but I'm scared too since my knee is so swollen from a skiing accident. It, here's the thing, and it could affect the rest of your body because as your body tries to repair itself, you might have a little extra swelling and blood volume in general, but still take those photos. That's a part of your journey. Take them because more than likely it's not going to affect your abdominals um, or your arms. It'll definitely affect your leg and the way your leg looks because it's your knee won't affect the way your butt looks typically. So still take those photos, absolutely, and definitely take those measurements and just see. And if maybe they aren't exactly what you thought they would be, then we can also sort of acknowledge that you just had an injury and that that could be part of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, is somebody saying, is the formula different because phase two and three are more intense that we go up a bracket? even if you've lost weight. Yes, and you don't necessarily go up a bracket. It's just that I've changed the formula, which obviously will technically probably bring you up a bracket. But yes, that's why. The workouts do become more intense. Um, you're, you're burning more calories, that we know for a fact. You're burning even more in phase two and phase three, but you see I didn't adjust the calorie burn at all. I adjusted the deficit. So, um, so just, yeah, be aware of that, that you do, you're going to push harder. You've already put on lean muscle in phase one. So we got to fuel that muscle a little bit more. My hair tickling my face. Okay. The best way to get accurate measurements. So it does say it in the guide, you guys. You always want to measure on the same side of your body. Um, and they actually, 
they have measurements for both the right and the left. So that's good actually. But if you were only measuring one side, you'd always do the same side. But you want to pay attention. It's ideal to have somebody else do your measurements for you because sometimes it's really hard to pay attention to whether or not you have the tape measure wrapped like completely flat, uh, completely flat like not, on, not, not sort of like twisted on an angle or, or anything like that. Um, having somebody else do it is, is usually the best idea. I understand we can't always do that. So when I do certain measurements, I was always taught you use your thumb and your pinky finger to measure. So like if I was going to do my thigh measurement, I put my, can you guys see this? I put my pinky finger in the middle of my knee and then wherever my thumb hits, that's where I'm putting the tape measure. I think you guys can see this because then it's always going to be the same exact spot because where my pinky and thumb hit is always going to be the same spot. That's so I'm accurate in where I'm doing. You can do it the same way. Um, elbow pretend I'm on the back of my arm, like elbow to middle of your arm. You can do that. So you end up right in the center of your arm. So there's always, you can always do that. Um, you know, you go through the belly button for your waist. That way you always know you're in the exact right spot. You always go through the thickest part of your hips. So again, you know, you're in the same spot. So just make, that's the biggest thing is making sure you're in the same spot and then making sure you don't pull the tape measure super duper tight one week and then kind of loose the next week. You want it to be firm and flat, but without overly pulling it. Um, let's see. Somebody said they did their measurements the first thing this morning and had great results. They're super excited. Somebody said, what if I have to do four more workouts this weekend? Um, well, first of all, I don't know that you should try to cram four workouts into one weekend. That's a lot on your body. I would just say, you know, do just be four days or four days behind us or two days behind us or whatever it is. And then whenever you get to the end of phase one, whatever day of the week that is next week, that's when you measure, um, or the day after, you know, you're just, you're just a few days behind us. It's no big deal. Okay. Um, you guys, I, I'm not going to say the calculation again, because it's online. It's, it's, it's um all you have to do is go into program materials it's on there so you can print it out you can look at it you got it right there um and and it tells you which one is maintenance and which one is weight loss so definitely just check that out under program materials uh somebody's down 2.4 pounds and 12 inches great job let's see what other questions Somebody said, I haven't seen much difference on my maintenance plan in plan B. Should I drop down to A, Yvette? Yvette, I, I, how much weight do you have to lose? That's the bigger question. And how are you feeling eating in maintenance? What made you choose to eat in maintenance? Um, there's, I need some more details on that. Somebody said they've been so freaking tired. You guys, it is, I will say, it's normal to be tired. So again, let's just acknowledge the difference between like dysfunctional tired and I've had a long day tired. If you're up at 4.30 or five o'clock in the morning and you're working all day, plus doing your workouts, plus blah, 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 you don't go to bed till 10 or 11 o'clock at night, you're gonna be tired because that's a long day. So that, that's different than like, oh my gosh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon and I literally can't think straight. My eyes are closing while I drive. I, I, I can't function tired. And you all know, we've all been there. Like we've all been hungry enough to know what that feeling is. Like whether it's hunger pains or, or how tired and sleepy it makes us. And we're just like, ah, I know I just need food and I'll feel better. Like, you know what that is. So you really need to be honest with yourself about what you're feeling and not use it as an excuse to just eat more food. Okay. That's a really important fact to keep in mind. Like you, you don't just go to maintenance because Hey, I want to have a few more containers and I like yellows and I want to eat more yellows. So I'm going to eat on maintenance, but I've got 30 pounds to lose and I feel fine when I eat in weight loss. I just don't want to eat in weight loss. 
that's not how this works. I, you, there's very specific reasons you eat in maintenance. You're either there, you're at your goal weight, and you're just looking to maintain slash building muscle. You're maybe five to 10 pounds from your goal weight, and eating and weight loss is a little too much, and you're super hungry all the time. Like Even after you eat, you're still like, oh my God, I need more food. Or you're, like we said, so tired you can't function. Or you're waking up in the middle of the night, you're so hungry. Like, these are reasons that you're like, hmm, maybe I need more food. Not just, I want more food. So let's be very clear about that difference. Um, let me see what other questions do we have. Uh, Mallory's asking, how do I know if I should eat in weight loss or maintenance? We obviously just covered that. Uh, if you only have, okay, so you guys here, again, everybody's body is a little bit different. So Kaylee's asking, um, I, if I only have five to 10 pounds to lose, do I stay in weight loss or do I go into maintenance? It really depends on how your body's doing in weight loss. If you're doing great in weight loss, stay in weight loss. Like you still have five to 10 pounds to lose. Okay. And if, if the number is coming down, okay, if you have five to 10 pounds to lose, don't expect to lose more than two pounds a week one to two pounds a week. When you're at those last five to 10 pounds, one to two pounds a week is very normal average. You might get lucky and get a week where you get three pounds or four pounds. And if that happens, then the next two weeks don't expect any weight loss. This is again, the ebb and the flow of what your body is going to do when it comes to weight loss. So if you're eating in weight loss and you have five to 10 pounds to lose and you feel really good eating in weight loss and you're losing inches and the scale is going down slowly but surely, then you stay there, then you're fine to stay there. You only go up into the maintenance if you're at your maintenance weight or if you have those sort of symptoms that I was just talking about that make you feel like you're gonna kill somebody and you need more food. So pay attention to that. Yes, you should be skipping your wine. Somebody came up to me at New Litter Conference last night and she was like, I love 80 damn sessions so much. And she had a glass of wine in her hand. And I was like, what's this? What's going on here? Why are you drinking a glass of wine? And she's like, it's the weekend. I can have it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you're going to be the one who posts. It's not working great. I didn't write wine into the plan, people. I'm just saying. Just keep that in mind. That's for round two. Round two of 80 day obsession. When you're on day like 90, then you can add a glass of wine in every once in a while. First round, you're supposed to be sticking to it. Okay. Okay, so somebody said, okay, Talia said, I calculated for phase two and ended up in plan B. I bumped up from plan A to plan B in phase one because of the hunger symptoms you talked about. Should I bump up to C? No, not necessarily. If you're eating in B and you're feeling really good, stay there for now. That's where, that's where the new calculation is putting you. That's fine. Stay there. Wait until we get into phase two, like give it a good week to 10 days and see how you're feeling. If, you know, seven to 10 days in, you're like, oh my God, all those hunger symptoms are back and I'm dying. Then maybe you would think about going up to plan C. But no, as of right now, you sort of let go of phase one, right? Just let it go. Pretend like this is brand new start day one, right? Like, obviously we're celebrating it. It's not really day one or anything, but we're not going to worry about what we did in, in phase one because we're no longer in phase one. So now you're just going to calculate for phase two based on everything we're talking about. And we're going to start there. And it's essentially like you start all over again to check in and see, because it's a whole new set of workouts. So you need to see how your body feels with this new set of workouts and the plan that you're eating on. You guys, I do want to point out one thing because as coaches, you might be, you might be hearing this. Um, I've had a few people like sort of criticize. It's not really 80 new workouts um, because cardio flow is the moves don't change, you know, week to week. There's not different in phase one. We do four reps of everything every single week. It is 80 different workouts. And here's why. First of all, we, we filmed the workouts every single day, right? So even on days we did cardio flow, there's, there's no telling. We moved faster. I don't know if you guys realize this, but by week four, you're finishing the same exercises and the same reps in way less time. 
that in and of itself is a new workout. So I've been very clear from the beginning. You don't have to change every move, every rep, every blah, blah, blah. You just have to change something for your body to recognize it as different. And when we go on to phase two, you do get a new leg day, a new cardio core, total body core, triple A, and booty day. And while the exercises from cardio flow remain the same, we now go into six reps of everything instead of four reps. I promise you, that is a different beast than four reps. So it is a different workout. And even on cardio core day, where you're doing the same moves and those moves are timed, the moves are timed, but the ab moves are not timed. And so even on cardio core days, it's different because I'm moving you at a different pace every single time we do it. You're hearing different cues every single time we do it. So all of those little things make each workout unique in and of itself and different. So if somebody questions you on that, there's your answer to them. It is absolutely 80 different workouts. So uh, don't let them come at you with that craziness. Okay. Somebody said, if I'm breastfeeding, do I have to recalculate for phase two? Um, no, because uh, it, you're doing maintenance. Sorry, I was just double checking to make sure that nothing was different. Because you should be eating in maintenance, and the maintenance portion of the formula, it remains the same. It's your current weight times 11 plus 600. That's maintenance. In, in all three phases. The only difference is the weight loss formula, you guys. So um, in phase one, weight loss, you subtract 750. In phase two, weight loss, you subtract 550. But you need to recalculate your maintenance no matter what, because if you've lost weight, you still, you still might end up in a different bracket even for your maintenance. So you still need to redo the calculation based on your current weight and not what your weight was um, day one. So that's why you would need to. Okay. Kathleen says, I'm still having issues with love handles. Here's the thing, Kathleen, we're only 26 days in. We're not at day 80. So don't worry about what you feel is your love handles right now because you still have tons of time. And there's so much change that can still happen, right? Like, oh my God, you have... 40 something days left, 50 something days left, there's still so much change that can happen. Think about the change that just happened in the first 26 days, okay? And now we're about to step it up even more and get more challenging in the exercises. So there's still so much change that's gonna happen. So don't freak out about that, okay? Just continue to do the work, trust the process. You gotta exercise, you gotta eat right anyways. So let's just give it time because you'll get there, okay? Uh, some Ashley saying, how do we know if we will burn more and should bump up a bracket if you fall into the same one for both phases? You guys, it's all the same things I've already said. It's all the same symptoms will determine if you need to bump up a bracket. But for today, you can't assume anything. The only thing you can do is your calculation, either weight loss or maintenance. So you decide where you're at. Do you have weight to lose or not? And if you have, you know, 10 or more pounds, you definitely want to be eating a weight loss to start. If you've got that five to 10 pound mark, you can use a little bit of how you felt in phase one to sort of guide you for your decision in phase two. Oh, I was eating weight loss and I felt really, really terrible there. Then I bumped up to maintenance and I felt great. So I'm going to stay in maintenance or what, whatever it might be. But you can't make a solid decision of, oh, I need to bump up a bracket before we've started any of the workouts. You got to get through the first week to decide how your body's feeling and the changes that it's making. So just acknowledge that. And again, I just need to point out, if you had huge weight loss numbers in phase one, just be aware that in phase two, you might have significantly less numbers lost. Okay. And that doesn't mean that nothing is happening. It just means if you lost 26 pounds in 26 days, we actually had somebody lose 26 pounds in like 24 or 25 days. If you lost that much weight in 24 or 25 days, you might go two weeks, two and a half weeks without seeing the number on the scale come down at all. It doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. It doesn't mean that you're not burning fat. It just means your body's going to pump the brakes for a minute and make sure all systems are a go and that you're okay because that's a significant amount of body weight to lose in a short period of time. And again, 
the ebb and the flow that your body will go through. So again, if you've lost 10, 12, 15, 20 plus pounds in phase one, don't panic in phase two if, if it looks like you hit a plateau. You didn't. I promise. It's just your body taking a minute to make sure everything's okay. Because all of a sudden, towards the end of phase two, you're going to see that big drop happen again. That's what we watched happen over and over with the test group, the original test group. Um, everybody was like, loved phase one, great results, phase one. Phase two kicked in, and the number on the scale slowly started to slow down a little bit because the huge weight loss had happened in phase one and people were like panicking. My phone was blowing up constantly. Oh my God, what's happening? What am I doing wrong? Why did it change? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you guys, you can't lose 20 pounds every 26 days. That just wouldn't be healthy. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, let me see. I'm gonna take a few more questions here. So, okay, so somebody saying, I'm in bracket A and I've maintained my weight. Phase two tells me to stay in bracket A, but I want to build bulk more muscle. Should I go up a bracket? I'm also a runner. Yeah, if your goal is to bulk, then yeah, you have to eat in surplus. So you should calculate your maintenance and then go one bracket above that. Because that's your, if that's your goal is to build slash bulk, then you need to be eating in a surplus to do that. Okay, it says, what if phase one didn't change the scale and phase two says you should go up a level? So trust what phase, two, I'm assuming, when, uh, that's Wendy asking me that. And Wendy, I'm assuming you were eating in weight loss and weight loss in phase two is going to tell you, is telling you to bump up a level. Um, I want you to follow whatever the calculation tells you, because again, you actually might need more fuel for one, but also, um, Again, different workouts. And did you lose inches? That's, you guys, I cannot tell you how important it is to keep track of your inches. Because how many times have we seen small movement on the scale, no movement on the scale, and somebody's like, hey, I dropped six inches. That means you lost all fat. That's amazing. Because you burned fat and you maintained or built muscle. That's huge. That's what you want. Because muscle is a furnace it burns calories so while the scale might not have moved if if you have gotten significantly smaller and lost inches everything's happening the way it's supposed to be happening the scale will move eventually don't panic and think that it won't but um just be aware of that that you have to if you can't just judge it based on the number on the scale you have to judge it on the inches also that's why it's so important for you guys to be doing those calculations uh there's container plans without the supplements. That's in your program materials. So check those out. Um, it's still, it's the same as whatever your bracket was, you guys. If you move up a bracket, it's still, there's still all the same information and all the same, um, like, guides that says, like, here's a sample meal plan, blah, 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 blah. Here's what your workout block looks like. It's in every single plan. So just check that out. Uh... These are all typing so fast. I'm trying to read a. I'm trying to read. Where did that go? Ah, I was reading somebody's question, and like a bunch of a bunch of posts came in, and I lost the question. I'll find it. Autumn, I started at my ideal weight. I want to just get lean muscle and don't see it yet. That's why I started in maintenance, but I can't eat all the food and I'm exhausted all the time. Yvette, you just answered your own question. You're at your ideal weight. You want to gain lean muscle. You're, so you're following maintenance, but you're not eating all the food. So you're not following maintenance. You're actually eating at a deficit and that is why you're exhausted. If you want to build lean muscle, you need to fuel your body. Right now, your body is telling you it's deprived of nutrients. It's telling you by being exhausted all the time and not seeing that muscle definition come on that it needs more fuel. So you, you need to train your body to eat a little bit more. Like if you're at that ideal weight and you want to see that muscle, you got to fuel it. And, and like I said, if, if, 
you can't do the maintenance calculation, say I'm eating in maintenance, but not eat all the containers because then you're not eating in maintenance. You're, you're eating at some form of a deficit. Um, and like I said, being tired all the time is your body's way of saying, I need you to eat those containers. So um, do your best to get those in. Uh, somebody said, I'm still in the same bracket after recalculating plan Z. Will this still feed my muscles and give me a deficit to lose the fat? I have 15 pounds to lose. Yes, Jessica, if that's where it puts you for right now, then yes, stay there. And we're going to wait and see how you feel. We're going to get through the first week and see how you feel. Okay. Somebody said I lost 15 inches and zero pounds. Yep, that happens. A lot of lean muscle, a lot of fat being burned. Um, I, I talk about Coach Tulin all the time, you guys. She lost like 23, 24 inches off of her body throughout the program and only lost three pounds. But if you look at her photos, she looked like she lost 30 pounds. So again, not always about the number on the scale. Um, somebody said, this is, this is not me saying this, I'm reading this question. It says, so to clarify, we should go up a bracket if we're in maintenance, but want to tone and sculpt. No, that's not a, a, at all what I said. Uh, it, you're in, you're eating in maintenance, that will tone and sculpt you. Going up a bracket would bulk you, would make you gain, think about, Think about chisel versus hammer, okay? Think about me versus Sagi. Sagi eats in surplus of calories so that he can ma maintain all of that muscle mass. When we talk about bulking, that's what we're talking. We're talking about gaining size. So if your goal is to gain size, then you would go up ab above your maintenance. If your goal is to tone and sculpt, you're, in, you're either in maintenance or weight loss if you have weight to lose while you do it. If you're at your ideal weight and you want to continue to tone and sculpt, you eat in maintenance. You guys, I, I'm always tone and sculpt. That's for me forever. I eat in maintenance. My maintenance is plan C. I don't go above that because I don't want to gain more. I don't go below that because I'd be a crabby raging lunatic. So plan C keeps me where I'm at. That's my maintenance. Okay. Somebody said, I gain inches in some areas. Is that muscle gain? Very well could be. Normally, the places you would see gain in inches would be biceps, like your arms, um, if you're lifting a little bit heavier because you'd be putting on lean muscle if you didn't have a lot there. You might see it around your hips if your booty lifted up a bit, okay? So if your butt was a little bit flatter and now it's a little more full and lifted, it will make the inches around your hips go up potentially. You might lose a little of the saddlebags, gain a little booty, in which case it could actually come out kind of the same, but the fat muscle ratio is different and the disbursement of it is different, so be aware of that as well. Uh, your legs could have a tiny little gain, again, if, um, if you had smaller legs to begin with or if you measured when you were swollen, then you might see a little bit of gain there. So again, it just depends on when you're measuring and what your goal was throughout the program and what your body type was when we first started off. If Again, if you were on the smaller side, you might see a little bit of the inches go up. So just be aware of that. Okay, I'm going to look at like one or two more questions. And then I think we've basically covered this recalculation. Uh, So somebody says, my current weight is 118 pounds. My maintenance calories are only 1,898. I've been eating in plan E because I struggle to stay at 120 pounds. So Kathy, you're the blessed one. You've got an insanely fast metabolism and your body needs to eat. So if that's the case and plan E works for you and it helps you maintain that 120 pounds that you want to be at, then, then eat there. Absolutely. Like that's what you should be doing because that's what works for you. So don't be afraid of that. Uh, Okay. It looks like you guys are sort of sort of asking the same questions over and over, but in terms of your own body weight. So I think we've kind of covered the recalculation. Uh, so let's just really quickly, I'm going to touch on Reefy Day. I mentioned it a little while ago, but um, when it comes to refeed, you'll follow your Reefy Day. I call it a modified refeed because it's actually a smaller refeed than what, um, what, a lot of people do in the fitness industry, but that's okay because we're not, we're not at total athlete level, you know, 
ready to step on stage kind of thing. So it's a modified refeed day and you're still eating in the same bracket. It's all very scientifically based. All of your containers are still timed out for you. So you're still going to follow your workout block, have your other containers. You are going to eat off of the supplemental yellow list only. Your yellows come from the supplemental yellow list only. That list will get updated this week because for some reason all the fixate recipes uh, are not on there. They're not listed. I, I'm not sure what happened, but we're getting that fixed. So um, you're only going to eat from the supplemental yellow list. You'll notice your fats are a little bit less, um, which is that's how we keep everything balanced. It's not a free for all. It's not a binge. You still eat your time to nutrition. And I think, you know, I'll come on probably, let's see, I think our refeed day is on Wednesday because leg day is Thursday. So I'll probably come on on Tuesday just to check in on you guys, see if you have any questions, but you're going to want to make sure you know what you're eating on refeed day before it happens because you don't want to be scrambling to be like, oh, I got to go buy a you know, blah, 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 or I need to make this recipe and I don't have the ingredients. You want to be prepared for refeed day. You're supposed to enjoy refeed day, but also keep in mind that yes, you're going to eat quote unquote dirty yellows from the yellow supplemental list. But aside from the dirty yellows, you guys don't go crazy. Like your reds should still be lean proteins. You still eat your vegetables. You still eat your fruit. Like you don't go crazy with eating random weird other things. You stick to your containers. So just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Hopefully I've answered everybody's question. You guys aren't all confused. You either just, you do your formula, you weigh yourself and you do your formula. That's the bottom line, either weight loss or maintenance. And, and then you wait until we get into these workouts to decide, yeah, this feels right. Or mm, this doesn't feel right. And obviously I'll be on here every day talking to you guys, coaching you guys through it. So don't panic. Just breathe, enjoy your rest day tomorrow, and get ready for boot.